Hello there, everybody. Welcome to Movies Are Real for the month of March 2022. <laughs> Not late at all, you know what I'm saying? Hello there, everybody. I'm George. I'm here with Ryan Lance. That's my name. Don't say it. Uh, Carrie Lyles. Hello. Uh, hello there, everybody. Uh, welcome to a new year. It's so weird. Every time we say it's technically the canonical new year of movies, not really, but we do the end <laughs> of in the middle because that's how movies work, you know? Um, anyways, hello there. Welcome. We're doing March 2021. Uh, it is April. We are 2022. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, that's uh, that's why we pay Carrie the big bucks so she can correct me every fucking time I get the year. Wait, around. Carrie's being paid. Oops! And I'm not. Yikes! Uh, I paid you. What the hell is going on here? Uh, March 2022. Uh, better late than never. Uh, anyways, hello. Yes, we have movies to talk about. Um, I think let's just get into it. The biggest movie of March, without a doubt, in the Morbius. movie. Morbius. No. Oh, no. oh, that's April. That's April. Oh, I'm so sorry. We don't get to that's talk April. about Morbius. We do yet. not get to yes. talk about Morbius. You know, <laughs> this is where you could. This is where you could do like a fun. We don't talk about Bruno, but Morbius. That's funny. Oh, you know, that's funny. There's funny. Too many syllables. It is. You're right. Anyways, <laughs> Matt Reeves the Batman came out. Um, we saw it. I only saw it once. Did everybody here saw it multiple times? People really. I saw it twice. I saw it twice. Okay. Twice. All right. Okay. Well, cool. Um. Anyways, yeah. There was a, certainly a lot of anticipation for this one. Matt Reeves, of the Apes man. Uh, Carrie, not a fan of the Apes. Don't like the Apes. Not a fan of the Apes, but <laughs> I uh, do. Like, he did Cloverfield too, right? He, uh -huh. I yes. like Cloverfield. All of us fans of Robert Pattinson, Robert oh Pattinson, God. if you will. Uh -huh. Um. And we're so we are a few months. Of, uh, of, uh, I'm not a few months. A month. It feels like a few months. A mm. month from it. Ryan Lance, what do you think of Matt Reeves, The Batman? Uh, it's like the best Batman movie. I don't. I mm. honestly don't know what to say, personally. It's just very, like... Because I rewatched some of the older Batman stuff um, in preparation for this. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to, like, do too much comparison to, like, this and other movies. But it's just, like, the world of Gotham looks horrible and, like very gothic in like of that fun aesthetic way from like uh like the old animated series sure yeah um i love i love that visual aspect of it and then robert pattinson it's the most comic booky i think since yeah. batman like the tim burton ones yeah and even then when i watch the tim burton ones they feel more tim burton than batman because he has a very like insane visual <laughs> style especially when it comes to comic book and stuff but this just feels like just like feels like you're looking at a comic book and then Brian Panson is unhinged and crazy. <laughs> he he's so focused on just being Batman and just beating people up that it's just admirable and like wonderful and Yeah, Bruce Wayne's not really in this movie. It's just the Batman. It's just no, Batman. and I, I really like that approach to it because it's it's, you know, he's early, he's so early in the career and he's so like focused on being Batman that he just has no interest in being Bruce Wayne. And that's like the main thing I've heard like other Batman fans like knock on this is like the his Bruce Wayne is just, you know, some emo boy and not like that playboy kind of aspect yeah. that uh, Christian Bales was known for. But it's like this man is just so focused on being crazy and like <laughs> beating people up that like I admire that. And that feels like it would make sense for this character at that place in that story. And He's just, it's just great. I, I love this so much. It's one of my favorite comic book movies now. Um, and it's weird being this uh, person who's been so, uh, just like bored with comic book movies after, you know, we've been spoiled with them to like have one come around that's very exciting and interesting. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say about Gary, it. Gary, what did you think of this Gary, one? you I, I, hate comic book <laughs> Uh, no, I really like this movie, too. And I know myself well enough to know that if it was someone other than Robert Pattinson and Paul mm, Dano and yeah. Colin Farrell, I probably wouldn't be as bit, invested, yeah. but I just really enjoyed their performances and mm -hmm. what they bring to the table. And uh, I found it fun and uh, fun and like dour detective movie at the same time. Yeah. And yeah. I really liked that. 
and I had a good time. And both times when I watched it, because like the big thing with this movie, a lot of people were like, three hours for Batman movie, and yeah. I didn't feel it Me neither. that much. I was entertained the whole time. And it's got some insane sequences, like the car chase sequence. Oh my god. Holy shit. I think that's why this is like, you know, so good, like, in a movie theater, because that car chase scene, like, with the speakers just, like, shaking it around <laughs> you is, like, ah, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Finally, a good car chase it's like, movie. Boom, 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 It's like, boom, oh, boom. shit. It's like, oh, no, here it comes. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I agree for the most part that the three hours that, like, flew by. It wasn't until, like, the last, like, once we were, like, this is the last act of the movie, clearly. Mm-hmm. That's what was, like, oh, okay, now, yeah. We have a lot more movie to go to to go through um but for the most part it didn't it didn't feel like it was that long i think there are moments for me where you could cut it and make it tighter for me um that is to say that i think this movie is good i like it a lot i don't love it um there are some weird parts that didn't work for me um like the stuff with alfred i wish there was uh i think wish that was stronger which uh yeah i think um oh my god andy circus is great but I don't think yeah. that he's got a lot to work with here, and he's not on screen that much. Yeah, and um, then there's a scene where you're like supposed to be super worried. Yeah, and you it's just like have it. you're, you're just it's like you only worry because it's like oh, it's Alfred. Yeah, yeah. Alfred right. No, Alfred yeah, exactly. Knowledge. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's what I like about it is that it's very comic book. It's very modern graphic novelly, mm-hmm. and I enjoy that. Where with Robert Pattinson's Batman doing the fucking this city. This movie. <laughs> well, fucking oh, music. No. Yeah. I love that. And I, I think, think it's great, yeah. I'm so excited for, like, sequels and, like, all the HBO spinoff shows they're apparently making. Sure. Because, like, yeah. you know what? I love this, like, world that, like, they made with this. I am so all for, you know, exploring that in more ways. Um, and also, you know, HBO Max needs a little more, uh, He's a little bit more content sometimes. Maybe I'm gonna get a lot more discovery stuff on there now. Probably. Um, I hope they don't go the like the Disney bundle route where it's like you can get uh, CNN Plus, HBO Max, and Discovery I think you Plus. Yes, on HBO one. Max. I've heard. Of C- Have you heard about C- CNN Plus? No. I mean, I've heard of it, but yeah, I haven't looked into it. Yeah, it's not doing well. Oh, okay. It's doing really bad. <laughs> and you know what? I like CNN. They're the yeah, news, they're fine. They're the news source I usually go to for. You know, basic new stuff, but man. I can watch my Anthony Bourdain on HBO Max. That's, That's you know, true. Is. Um, oh, John Turturro's a great bad guy. I have to get he back on the least. Batman. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because I, I, we were a generation who has seen John Turturro be humiliated as a fucking klutz in the Transformers movies. Uh, mm. And in this movie, he is just really good. <laughs> just really calm, cool bad guy. I mean, it's not a groundbreaking bad guy. It's just like the very stone face, don't fuck with me bad guy who's got a... Uh, good mob a, boss energy. Exactly. A good mob boss energy to him. Um, but yeah, he's great as a bad guy. Um, I like Zoe Kravitz. Uh, I think uh, the Penguin is fucking great. <laughs> he's, the, yes. he's, like, he's fucking he's fantastic. So good. <laughs> He's the most comic booky thing of the movie, maybe, but he fits in perfectly fine. Um, Whoa, take it easy, sweetheart. Take it easy, sweetheart. That's what I love about that spinoff. It's going to be 10 episodes yeah, of yeah. <laughs> Just doing that. Will and it I, get old? No. No, no, it will not. It will only get better. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to say about this movie. I didn't love it as much as... Uh, I think like, people are really head over heels with this. I think you like it a lot, Ryan. I like it a lot. Um, definitely up there for favorite comic book like stuff too uh it's the batman baby um i wish i liked it a little bit more just because um it seems fun to love this movie a lot you think do you think it'll be something when you rewatch it someday you'll be like ah oh, I, I like and appreciate a lot more of that. i think it's there's just some a lot of stuff in it that doesn't work for me i think i don't know if that stuff is going to i mean, can overlook it or if it just okay. melds in better for me um, but I'm going to buy the Blu-ray because nice. why not? I, <laughs> if I can watch that movie, that three hour movie at home, that's fine. Uh, while it, I'm doing the chores. It, it, it feels good when like a big blockbuster movie with like a lot of money and its effects comes out and I like it enough to want to buy the Blu-ray because then it's like, okay, I have all these weird art house movies. Sure. Um, but now I have something that like really just like uses all that fancy shit. Or whatever, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, good, good stuff. 
Anyway, that's the Batman. Uh, next movie on here, I have not seen yet, but I want to see. Oh. It feels like a while since I've seen people talk about it, but that is a Fresh, Fresh which baby. is on Hulu. Mm-hmm. Hulu original. And it baby. is a horror movie, right? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Carrie, what the hell is Fresh? Uh, Fresh is uh, about this girl who is experiencing the tumultuous landscape of online dating. Oh. And uh, she's like, God, I've had it with all these dating apps. I just want to meet someone, but everyone's awful. And then she goes to a grocery store and she has a meet, meet cute with this very charming man in the grape aisle. And he's got cotton candy grapes. Sebastian and he's, Stan. Yeah, Sebastian Stan. And uh, she's like charmed by him. And then they wind up going on a couple dates and forming a connection. And he's like, let's go on vacation together. And this girl's friend is like, don't do that. And then she's like, it'll be fine. We've been on like four dates. I know him so well. No, it no, no, was no, no, no. not fine, reader. <laughs> uh, I so she it to you. she goes on the vacation and finds herself imprisoned of sorts. And I'll I'll let I'll let the movie unfold right. for you because <laughs> it's a fun journey when it you, is it is a when fun you don't journey. go in knowing what the thing is. But the way that it's being advertised, you kind of yeah know the what advertising kind of takes away. But you know, I think. This is a movie similar to, um, God, what was it that we watched recently that had the title card drop super late? Um, My car? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this, this movie has a very long pre- like, Oh, I see what you're saying, um, yeah. <laughs> pre- prelude, I guess, mm-hmm. um, to when the title card drops, and once it does drop, you're gonna be like, okay, oh. <laughs> I get it, and this is amazing. Yeah. Um, it's it's so good. It's a really good movie. Sebastian got- Stan is a very good so like good. serial killer yeah. kind of man. <laughs> um, it's very good, and I really like the uh, the main lady too. She mm-hmm. she kind of did that. Um, she did that role very well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't I I don't want to say too much because like the surprise of like where it goes is like very fun, but like right. it's just like a very good solid horror movie that's a Hulu original, right? You yeah. Know? Like, usually it's just the Into the Dark stuff, which is like, okay, that was all right. Yeah. It's not Puka, but... <laughs> oh, my God. Few things are. Few very, things can be. Very true. All right. It's, it's got a lot of style. It's got panache, and it's fun. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. tell myself I'll watch that it's, after. It's a, fun, yeah. it's a fun spooky movie. Yeah, and it's got twists and turns, baby. Oh, whoa. <laughs> okay. I'd recommend. Okay, I will try to watch that before my two-month free trial to hulu runs out uh again um that's fresh baby uh next movie i remember us briefly mentioning that you knew that the director but i had no clue uh, it's after yang which also has colin farrell yes this movie dropped the same day as the bat great he had a great march third uh but this is uh i always forget how the letters are arranged uh koganada who uh directed um Columbus. Columbus. And uh, before that, he made a living as, like, a video essayist um, with some YouTube stuff, but mostly, like, making video essays, like, for, like, companies and whatnot. Um, And when you watch Columbus, you're like, wow, that, like, it's so, like, visually, like, beautiful and, like, cool. You're like, okay, this is a guy who made, you know, (laughs) artsy-fartsy video essays. And, like, I was, like, rewatching some of his old stuff um, from a few years back, and I was like, this guy, like, made, like, the the template for how everyone else makes oh, yeah. these video essays. Like, it's so remarkable. He's such a cool visual guy. But After Gain, starring Colin, whoa, take it easy there, sweetheart Feral. Um, <laughs> it takes place in, like, pseudo-future, and it's about a family of four, um, Colin Farrell, his wife, their adoptive daughter, and an android that um, is programmed to help um, teach their adoptive daughter about uh, her Chinese culture because Colin Farrell and his wife are not Chinese, but they adopted a Chinese girl. Oh, okay. Um, and the story of the movie goes on with um, the android like shuts down suddenly and they're not able to bring him back up and it's just them dealing with, you know... Um, Moving on from what is essentially like losing a family member, mm-hmm. um, as well as, you know, Colin Farrell's relationship with um, Yang, uh, the android, 
was a lot more of like, oh, he has this. But a- as it goes on, he learns a lot more about, you know, uh, who he was outside of that family and how his relationship with his daughter, you know, really affected her. And he's just like reconnecting with this person that passed away and learning more about them. And it's so beautiful. It's it's like visually so cool. Uh, Colin Farrell is like amazing. Like watching this the day after you watch the Batman <laughs> is so crazy because this man has so much rage. He can go from like crazy, you know, penguin psychopath to like this soft, somber, sad performance. <laughs> it's so good. I love this movie way too much. It's crazy. I want to watch it. Is it only on Showtime? It's or? right now only on Showtime. You can probably rent it somewhere, but yeah, I don't know what's going on. Like it's just a Showtime original and it had very few like theater screenings. None of them in our area, mm-hmm. obviously, which annoyed the <laughs> hell out of me. Um, right. but yeah, this, this movie is amazing. I, I love it so much. And, uh, it, uh, I don't know, man. It's I so, really want to watch it. It's it so good. Great. It, uh, it has some visual stuff very similar to a movie called All About Lily Chocho, um, which is very cool because that is a very, you mentioned that very, last time, very then. underrated, uh, Japanese, uh, drama film. So if you're a fan of that movie, you will like this movie a lot for a reason that i will not say but yeah i would recommend both of those very very good am i crazy or was colin farrell in the fantastic beasts yeah. yes he, he was, was in the first one he okay. was the disguise that grindelwald was wearing okay he was like a he was like a cop or something in the first one i don't remember and then it was revealed that it was grindelwald oh, the whole time okay. which is weird because it's like oh like colin farrell's a good like johnny depp is like you know, at that time was a good actor, but like yeah. you already ha- hired Colin Farrell, so why not just have Colin Farrell be Grindel Grim? Yeah, Grindle. just a very weird yeah. reveal. Um, I don't know. It felt like a more of a reveal of the actor than <laughs> yeah, because like the... I had no idea who yeah. Grindelwald it's was. It's Grindelwald. I only knew because like before that happened, like an article comes like Johnny Depp is going to be Grindelwald in the Fantastic Beasts sequel, and I was like. What did you just say? And it's like, Grindelwald, Ryan Grindelwald. Comicbook.com, relax. Jeez. Why are you yelling at me like this? Okay, well, that's after you. Do they bring up Grindelwald in the movies at all? Is that just like a... Uh, probably. I want to say that they do. There's like that scene where they're trying to get back to uh, Hogwarts and they have to go to Dumbledore's brother's house and he smuggles them in through the secret painting tunnel behind, yeah. that he has a painting of his sister and I think they mentioned Grindelwald in that scene because he's like he killed Dumbledore's sister or something. I don't know. Don't ask me. No, no. <laughs> Carrie, I watched those movies <laughs> a year ago I and I recall nothing that's, of that's, that. That's one of those scenes that it's like I feel like this would be more significant if I knew what was going on. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't read the books so I just I just remember that. It's like the Second to last. If movie, I sat down I to rewatch those now, it's been a decade since I've seen those. Probably mm-hmm. um, not like I'm walking at a Planet Fitness or whatever, and it's playing on the television. Um, I, I probably had some. I probably uh, gleaned some interesting insights watching them this far removed from when they came out. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt when I watched them for the first time, like <laughs> oh. a year or two ago. Yeah. I was like, huh. Those first two movies are great. I love the first two I like two the first. So the second one's is like my favorite like, one now. The second and third one are very It's like good. whimsical, magical, like kids book uh, yeah. movie. Yeah. I take that back. The third one is my favorite one by far. And then the second one is my... I thought I didn't like the second one. And then I rewatched them with Greg. And I was like, oh, this is fantastic. Hold on. Yeah, that, that movie's <laughs> very fun. That, that's one of the few ones I did watch as a kid. And I liked that one a lot. Uh, but then the third movie came out. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> How many? Never uh, mind. I'm, I'm I'm seven, and this is already exhausting <laughs> to me. Um. Anyways, uh, that's after Yang, folks. Um, Turning Red, baby. Yeah. Uh, Pixar's Turning Red, exclusively on Disney Plus, no so, theater yeah. run, which uh, it's sort of a kerfuffle. Uh, is what I said on the podcast where people were upset that this wasn't getting a theatrical run mm. and that it was going to get buried. Did not get buried at all. No. Whatsoever. People <laughs> were very excited for this movie. Um, so yeah, Turning Red, uh, it is a, can, a movie about a young Canadian girl, uh, young Canadian Asian uh, girl, 
uh, who's got a bunch of dweeby friends. Uh, they're all a bunch of nerds and dorks and whatever the hell. Um, but she's very much a, a person who like loves her mother and has always tried to, you know, uh, live up to her expectations. Uh, and then it turns out they have like a panda curse, you know. And uh, whenever it, is it is it a, is it a specific trigger for each one of them, or is it always like when they get a, like get angry or something? What was it? I don't remember what. I assume. It's just whenever they reach puberty age. Right, that they mentioned, but then it's like, yeah. Anyways, you probably know what this movie is because it's very popular. Um, I thought it was great. I don't know, Carrie, did you ever wind up watching it? Mm-hmm. You did? Yeah, okay. I liked it a lot. Okay, I thought it was fantastic. Um, I thought, I thought it, was, it was okay. Yeah, I know you thought it was okay. <laughs> um, I thought, I think um, it is a very... It is a very down to earth normal Pixar movie. All, all, Panda aside, it is <laughs> yeah. a movie that's dealing with a lot of like normal, like parental relationship stuff and like coming of age things. Like it's not like fantastical fucking raccoon who's um, controlling a human, and uh, you know, uh, it's not a. It's so familiar. It's not. I can't a, quite. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and I think in that, I found it pretty fascinating. Uh, I thought the story it tells, uh, about being a dorky girl and, uh, being okay with that and stuff. And, uh, it's pretty interesting. I don't love, I, I get the argument that the art style just kind of looks like any Pixar movie or not even Pixar. It looks any animated movie. Like it doesn't look like a Pixar movie necessarily. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. That's where I stand with it. Carrie, what do you think of it? I liked it. I thought it was really cute. I like the I I love uh, re- the red panda stuff and <laughs> sort of <laughs> big creature walking around. I'm a big fan. But uh yeah, I liked I like I really enjoy movies about uh being cringy in 8th grade cuz I'm just <laughs> like, yeah, that was me too. <laughs> but uh yeah, I thought I really enjoyed the the angle of figuring out where the balance between the connection you have with your family and the connection you have with your friends and like struggling between feeling which one is stronger or trying to please both groups. I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. It was a good, it was a good time. Sandra, it was great as a mom. Mm -hmm. I think, Mm -hmm. yeah, Sandra was fantastic. Um, Yeah. I don't really know what to say, but I, Billie Eilish and her brother did the music for this movie and (laughs) I couldn't, I mean, I could not tell until I saw the credits that it was them yeah, that made the music. I forgot run. that you mentioned it, and then I saw the credits. And I was like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, they were just. I saw a clip on TikTok. I think of them talking about how they were just like, "We gotta write really watered down boy band music." Yeah. They're like lots of double negative, lots of uh, lots of things that don't make sense. It was just them talking about. It reminded me of when. Uh, Lady Gaga had to write like pop music, pop pop music for uh, what's it Star called? Is Born? Star is Born, yeah. where she became oh. a pop star, and she had to write all the 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 fluff pop music that Bradley Cooper was like, Ugh, why do music like that? I don't know. like that. <laughs> I'm gonna. Oops, I'm dead. <laughs> Ryan. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. I didn't really hunt him so on. Oh, damn it. Does it, is it always the tragic end to that character in all the versions? Well, of yeah, because that's what ones. makes the star be born. Oh. The, she's born well, from tragedy. Sucks. Oh, I think I haven't watched any of the other There's ones, but I assume that that's the thing. Anyways, uh, Ryan, what do you have to say about Turning Red? It's fine. I think like watching it, like I I like the ideas of it. I liked how it was tackling you know puberty stuff and specifically like, puberty for like young girls. But I just never found any of the characters fun, and I felt like the, like the a lot of the humor was hyper, but not like in an enjoyable way. Like it wasn't like it was just bouncing from one thing to another. But those just people just talking to each other, less of just things like mixing together naturally. Just like oh, funny thing, funny thing. Well, I'm crazy, boys. And it was just like okay, I, I, like I know, I get it. <laughs> Trust me, I get it. Please. Um, but yeah, like it's fine. I think I, I just didn't care for any of the characters for the most part. But I liked like the ideas and what it was going for for the most part. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's fine. But I also don't really care for Disney in general. So 
maybe that has part of it. I think it. I liked it more than I liked it more than Luca for sure. I think Luca's prettier, but I didn't like Luca very much. And I think I like it better than Soul. Soul looks gorgeous. Uh more prettier than this movie for me. But yeah, I think this is the most interesting thing they've done in a while. And for next me. they're gonna make, you know, a light year movie. Um, that's the that's in theaters because that's the that's the cash cap. That's the cash cap. Which is weird because like the last like four Pixar movies have all been Disney Plus, but you know Lightyear, that's in theaters. Mm-hmm. Which you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, whatever. uh, we're well, yeah. Lore for the we always we gotta say this. Uh, we're watching Final Destination three this time while recording this episode. We are in the infamous uh sun tanning, uh death from these ladies. Um. Yeah, they're about to get cooked. Yeah, this guy, <laughs> stuff. the concept of putting a fucking bottle of suntan lotion as your little yeah, foot door like, thing. Anyways, like honest, I don't want to say like they had it coming, but like <laughs> honestly, that's a <laughs> well, movie. they didn't do that. They didn't the do guy that. did that. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> the worst thing they did was bring a slushy cup to the. Oh, yeah. that also did not help the situation. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Uh, Do people still use these booths? These like candy booths? I don't know. Beds? I don't You're know. You're asking me. <laughs> I, look at I'm me too, ghost. Gary. <laughs> Same here. I I don't know. I assume so. Oh. I think spray tans are pretty popular. That's for sure. Is that what you're asking? You would think spray tans? I think be... spray tans the modern version of this because that's like quicker and there's less of you being cooked. Uh, bit cooked, yeah. I I just remember the last time I had an update on like tanning culture was on that one season premiere of Jersey Shore in like 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 forever ago. I think it was the second season, and Snooki was like, "I've switched to spray tans because Obama put a tax on tanning bed (laughs) tans." And so, and then she goes on to endorse John McCain because he would never put a never put a tax on tanning. (laughs) that's good that's the last time i knew what was going on in the tanning industry right that show is almost a decade old i know it's definitely a decade old Old yeah anyways um moving on i don't know what this movie is uh all my friends hate me oh i watched this Uh, okay uh carrie what is all my friends hate me uh this is are you trying to say something to us yes oh no (laughs) (laughs) that i think you hate me oh uh this movie well nobody to think (laughs) <laughs> this movie i'm pretty sure it's a british film everyone in it's british but uh it's about a guy who has this group of college friends who they were super super close with uh when he was in college and then they sort of went their separate ways like they all stayed close but he sort of branched off and did like charity mission work elsewhere and then now that he's back they're having a birthday bash for him in this a uh, random castle in the countryside and they're like come on it'll be just like old times and basically this entire movie is him being insecure about wh- where he fits in with this group of friends in the present day and just constantly putting his foot in his mouth while being oh, with wow. this group of friends huh. and uh him overanalyze it as the title would suggest him just all- always being paranoid about something huh. going on so then the movie plays with is there something going on or is this man just deeply paranoid? And then while you're watching, you're like, well, now I'm paranoid. It's just, it was a fun, it was a fun, quick movie. And I, I had seen someone mention it online and I made a note to watch it. And I saw that it became available to rent and I checked it out and it was fun. It wasn't anything crazy, but I had a good time with it. I like all the characters were fun. And that sounds uh, like it gives me anxiety. Yeah. It's definitely a, a, a a pressure cringy movie where you're just like, (laughs) very anxiety inducing, but also very fun in a bad way. (laughs) All right. Well, that's all my friends hate me. That's that sounds interesting. It's fun. Uh, windfall baby. Yeah, I watched this. This one, one has a shrug emoji. <laughs> yeah, because I'm forgetting on the happened. notes to our uh, our document, folks. That's what we're talking about. Uh, so this movie stars uh, Jason Segel, Lily Collins, and our good pal Jesse Plemons, friend of the show. Oh, oh this uh, is a Netflix movie. This right? is a Netflix movie. Yeah, this is this is one of those like so Jesse Plemons and Lily Collins. Uh, he is a you know tech millionaire, 
and Jason Siegel breaks into their house and basically holds them hostage. Jason Siegel. What does Jason Siegel look like? Let me pull he's up the my... What's he look like guy now? From yeah. Muppets. Yeah. Muppets oh, How, okay. I, met, How <laughs> I Met Your Mother. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and it's basically a robbery gone wrong kind of movie. Um, because he tries to, like, hold them hostage, but, like, little things keep happening and it just... Things just end up do, end up not working out. Um, Carrie is uh, laughing by the transition in Final Destination <laughs> 3. The transition, that's awesome. The, no. From the flaming tan. You stopped watching immediately the after. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Again, I don't know why it stopped there. I cannot remember the last time I watched this movie, but I, I gotta tell you, it was probably for a bit. Anyways, Probably moving anyway, on, as you're talking yes. about, as Jason Siegel cool. is uh, keeping fucking Jesse Plemons and Lily Collins or whoever. Come. Yeah, a hostage. Um, he is trying to get money, but because, you know, it's the weekend, the banks are closed, so he has to basically okay. <laughs> hold them hostage for the rest of the weekend awesome. so they can get, like, the money, like, over to, like, his villa. Um, and I like the idea. I like all these actors individually, but it's one of those, like, it, it it really feels like it was filmed during COVID because like there's no other actors besides those three and like a mm-hmm. gardener who comes in like later on. And it's just them like dorking around the house and doing stuff. And I, I like this the, the beginning and the end, but like obviously in a movie like this, the middle really drags because they're just like, all right, we're being held hostage. Uh, what do we do? Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's fine. Uh, it's it, it's a different kind of Jesse Plemons role. He's still a weird asshole, but he's not a cop. He's a tech billionaire, oh. which is interesting. Uh, that checks out. I mean, I was introduced to Jesse Plemons as him playing a Nazi in Breaking oh, Bad, so that's not too okay. far off from that. Okay. I th- yeah, that's how most people know Jesse Plemons from, as the Nazi yeah, from Breaking I don't Bad. Think being carried we were that. from... Uh, uh, I'm thinking of ending things. Yeah, I think yeah. he's the first thing I was like, that guy. That guy. <laughs> yeah, because I remember because then uh, Jungle, uh, what was the movie that, oh, Antlers. Antlers we saw yeah. a trailer for that yeah. when it was coming out again. We were like, oh, that was Jesse Plemons. Whoa. <laughs> and a lot of people, and a lot of people were upset. Like, how dare Jesse Plemons get, gain weight because he was super skinny in Breaking Bad. Oh, really? Yeah. That was weird. Huh. Anyways, Breaking look, Bad. Okay. Uh, hey, windfall. Breaking Bad. What? Windfall. windfall. <laughs> yeah, Windfall's fine. <laughs> Great. Uh, it sounds fun. I would probably check that yeah. out. Oh. Uh, that's Windfall. Uh, X. Gonna give it to you, baby. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about that Did you that forget song. about X? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> X is the last movie on this list by director Ty West, put out by A24 with Mia Goth, a Britney Snow, one Kid Cudi, Jenny Ortega of Scream, and what's that one movie with the shooter? The the Fallout. The Fallout, baby. New Vegas. No. Oh, <laughs> Incorrect. Uh, new Ty West movie, horror movie, 70s, uh, schlocky, dirty movie. Oh, hmm. Yeah. yeah, it could be dirtier though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're pornographers. Yeah, but there's but not like, a lot of I was thinking. grit. I mean, you do see make a Kid Cudi understudy dick. Not actually Kid Cudi's dick. I doubt it's actually Kid Cudi's dick in it. What? Uh, <laughs> I think I think it's cowardly of Kid Cudi to not have shown Kid Cudi, singer of the Sonic the Hedgehog two theme song. Uh-huh. <laughs> um. Anyways, X. Um. I guess I'll start with this one. I like I like Ty West. I like the Devil, oh the House of the Devil. I like that song. I like that song. The movie. I the Innkeepers is fine. Uh, I obviously love his work with VHS. Um, and the Sacrament fuck, fucked me up because I it just like I can't do cults. Uh, the sac- I've not seen that one. I sac- want to watch it. It's pretty <clears throat> good. It's just uh, it's it's pretty cut and dry of a movie. The sac- was well, Sacrament. Uh, tangent. The Sacrament is a movie about some documentarians from Vice who are like, we're going to embed ourselves with this thing. And then, you know, like a Vice story where they're like, they are blah, 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 blah. Um, Instead, it turns out that they're a death cult. And then Oops. They, they come visit them on the day that like, let's take the Kool-Aid. Oh. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Like, oh. it's, it's very cut and dry. I hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cut and dry. Like what happened? Uh, but it's, but it's uh, shot on video. So it's like. Really disturbing. That's what got to me. I was like, uh, I like uh, uh, this is like real. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, anyways, back to X. 
X says, uh, yeah, these, these pornographers are like, let's shoot a pornography film, a motion picture where you have sex and you film it. Um, oh, <laughs> that's what they were doing. Exactly. I was so confused. <laughs> uh, and so they go to this really cool normal farmhouse, uh, and then stuff goes bad. Wah, wah, wah. Um, I think I love s- smut. I mm. love garbage. I mm. love that shit. Um, for me, this movie is it's 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 fun, but it's uh it doesn't go very far in the grindhousey, gross, uh, smutty stuff. And um, I think at a, at its heart, what is interesting about this movie is that there's this narrative. Spoilers for this movie: this narrative of um, sexuality, and you get old, and your body is not what it used to be, mm-hmm. and you don't feel confident about yourself anymore. And uh, you know, you still have desires, and you're still a person. You still like, yeah. But that stuff is kind of it doesn't work because. Ty West and the gang here still kind of make these people seem like creepy old weirdos. Sure. Um, yeah. But that's the stuff that is the most interesting for it for me. Um, and I think uh, Mia Goth is and Jenny Ortega are, are, are good. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's all I got to say I about it. Can I ask a question? Because yeah. when I was making the notes for this, I was like, oh, I'm the dumbest person alive. Because I didn't realize that Mia Goth played the old woman. Oh yeah, I, I didn't realize that until I was looking into the movie. I did not know this either. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, it is very God. good old yeah, lady Yeah, no, makeup. it's fantastic. Because I was like, why aren't any of these listing who played Pearl? And I was like, oh, I did not I'm know this. Idiot. I did not know yeah. this. Yeah, so, so it made me want to watch it again. But I really, really liked this movie. I uh-huh. had a blast with this movie, and I'm glad that I caught it in theaters before. I also it. glad I caught it in theaters. Yeah, it was a good time, and I really liked. I'll oh, probably buy it just because it's. Fun. I will definitely buy it. Um, I don't know. I liked the extreme gore. I had fun with a lot of the practical effects that they were using. I liked a lot of the technical stuff that this movie did. Like I that love one. the alligator. I love yes. it. It's so that good. That shot with Mia Goth floating oh, and then the camera just yeah, that's just great. That shit's great. Holy, that's fuck. classic. I lost yeah. my mind. That was I great. Loved that. that was, was good. So fucking good. That was the stuff that I think that was mostly like ah yeah here yeah. we fucking go. <laughs> And I liked a lot of the editing stuff that he did too. Just that was homage to other horror movies, like when he did the dual panel stuff. Mm-hmm. With it made me just think of Carrie, and uh, I like that movie, obviously. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know. And I just really like the performances, and I like, I just liked this movie way more than I thought I would. I don't know. Yeah, for a group of gang, a gang of people that you know are all gonna die. They're not completely unlikable they're, they're all interesting yeah. in their own, in own way and the the weird jenny ortega plays a character jenny ortega and her boyfriend are college students who like are film majors or whatever the fuck and they're right. here to get a job yeah. to shoot it <laughs> and jenny ortega comes from being like i don't know about this porn stuff he was like you know what kid cutty let's have sex and let's film it and, and i thought that was funny that the whole boyfriend's little... like babe <laughs> <laughs> um yeah even like the fucking the 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 guys all like with Matthew McConaughey fucking sounding guy. Yeah. He's fine. He's fun. I don't know. I liked him. Yeah, I don't know. Ryan, what'd you think of this? I think I like more of the like the porn parody like humor than like the gore stuff. Cause like just like how like the light humor of like all the dudes are always wearing like really tight underwear and their <laughs> bulges are like comedically large all the time. There's the weird outline of kids c- cutties weeder and like it's like unrealistically long i feel like that's all like there, there's a lot of very funny stuff with that um that i really liked but when it got to the gore stuff it just felt like uh like hey this movie is switching gears from like uh porn parody comedy to like horror very quickly <clears throat> and with the villains just being like these two like weird gross old comedic comedically gross old people <laughs> it's like okay but like i get that these guys are all idiots but like how are how are you dying to like two 80 year old people um who look very unhealthy i should say <laughs> there are 80 year olds who are healthy and then there's these two yeah that's my thing with uh, it yeah because i think the story at its heart is pretty touching even if they're the bad guys there's yeah. still something there but just the fact that they're like fucking scary stories to tell in the dark looking yeah, motherfuckers. Right. Um 
Anyways, yeah, I don't know. X is I it's like, enjoyable. I like uh, X. There's funny. that prequel that they're gonna make. Um, if you know anything about that. Uh, yeah, they they're gonna make it on uh, based on. Did you stay for the after credits? Apparently, there's an after credits thing. I didn't know until later. But they're making a prequel called Pearl, where Mia Goth just is Pearl. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> they filmed that um in secret, like after uh they finished filming X. Uh, Ty West apparently like asked me, got like, hey, you want to stay for like two more weeks and film another movie? And she was huh. like, Oh, all right, sure. Oh, well, awesome. Um, and then he was like, and he was like, yeah, it's gonna probably be a trilogy. Ooh, <laughs> it's like sick. okay, cool. Hell yeah. Interesting. Um, so yeah, there oh, yeah, is awesome. there is a prequel already filmed apparently. <laughs> sick. Mm. Gimme. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's X, and that is the movies of March, folks. Um, I think, uh, and I guess there wasn't that much now that I think about it. It really was in my mind like, oh, the Batman. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that was the month with the Batman. Um. Anyways, Morbius, baby! Morbius. I can't fucking wait until everybody's watching Morbius and we're all talking about Dr. Michael Morbius, baby! He's like, oh, Michael Morbius, that's just so... Oh, I got some bad news. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be great when he says that oh, line. Oh, no. I listened to somebody describe that entire movie play by play. What's the name of the fucking guy um, played by Matt Smith? Matt Smith was a kid. Right, and Michael Morbius met him, and he was like, uh, oh, I'm sick uh, like you, Morbius. Isn't that not what happened? Did somebody yeah, lied yeah, in that yeah. happened? That, uh, yeah. He was <laughs> like, I'm just a little bit Exactly. Boy. What is his name? They gave him some dumb what, fucking... What Milo. Milo, yeah. yeah. My name is Milo Morbius at the service. So exactly. Oh, yeah. I, thought, I thought that Morbius gave Matt Smith the name Milo. Yeah. Yes, he did, but oh, it's okay. not his real name. But it's like they no, make, yeah, it's his like name a, was like Lucius. Exactly. Or something. But like, no, I'm gonna <laughs> call you Everyone Mar- was immediately like, "Oh, that's Milo." <laughs> exactly. Milo. <laughs> Milo. <laughs> He's like, oh, man. All right. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly. That, somebody here, described that to me as well. I've been here ten minutes and they've already changed my name. <laughs> and my everyone went with it immediately. I can't wait until that post credit scene. Okay, the joke here is that well, you guys saw. Did you see my Morbius? You saw Morbius. Of course. You saw Morbius. I saw okay, Michael we'll talk Morbius. about it next time. Opening night. We'll talk about it next. I want to talk about Morbius, but we can wait. Eight. God damn it. Uh, Anyways. Can I just say one thing about Michael Morbius? Sure. Mike Morbius. Uh it's great. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's great. Um I told this to Carrie, but like you know how like when you watch a movie and like no. with the main character when you when you leave a movie and it has a main character that's like their name is in the title, yeah. you you come away with a basic understanding <laughs> of like who that person is and like what their <laughs> motivations and like interests are. None of that. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's honestly astonishing. I, I Especially because it's Jared Leto, a man who is so like painfully weird with his characterization. Yeah, I watched this movie and learned nothing about Morbius. <laughs> That's all I want. I, I just want to, I just need to emphasize that because it just blows my That's mind crazy. how a movie can be yes. named after someone and then I'm left yeah. knowing nothing yeah, about Ryan, this person. Ryan pointed that out when we were driving home and I was like, oh yeah, huh? <laughs> I don't know a single thing about I learned more about Milo Morbius. <laughs> Oh, that's why they called it Morbius, because of Milo Morbius. It all comes around. I don't, know I don't get it. Uh, Anyways, <laughs> I hope the food is better in this joint. Um, <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Knuckles. Uh, another movie yeah. that we have that I have seen. I saw it. You saw it? Mm-hmm. Great, we'll talk about it yeah, then. Greg wanted to see it. <laughs> Anyways. Ambulance, baby! Michael Gary, Bay. You did change the uh, the font for the LA like it is in the poster because I'm oh, guessing it takes place yeah. in LA. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Michael Beck is back, baby. Michael Beck is back. Exactly. Uh, ambulance. I uh, might see ambulance. I don't know if it's still playing. Shit. <laughs> it was playing at the Alamo today. Um, wow. When I was leaving, I walked. I walked past. And I heard like, Pew! and I was like, "Is that an ambulance?" <laughs> and I looked, and it was ambulance, and I was like. Yes. That, now that's a movie that knows what it's doing. They should make a they should make a hurdle for like movie sounds and just like Wee! it's all I'm not ambulance. ambulance. Like, you did it. You're the only person to get that. Whoa. <laughs> what is Father Stew? Father Stew is a movie that Mark Wahlberg produced. Oh God. Um, and a, according to this thing I read, he put forth most of the money for it. Um, it is about a boxer who slash criminal who later became a priest 
and Mel Gibson plays his dad. Mm. So Gross. there's a few <laughs> issues. <laughs> First off, Mark Wahlberg as a priest is interesting. Him putting forth so much money into it just because like he believes in it is like 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 I like that like I I I enjoy when an actor is very passionate about a project that they put forth a lot of their own money. Sure. That's always admirable. But this is a weird one, especially when you're gonna have someone as genuine, mostly unliked as uh, Mel Gibson uh, playing your dad. Um, but yeah, that's Father Stu. Okay, that's well, I'm know. glad I knew it's, about it's that. It's not now. super well liked. It, not I believe it's out at the point of a uh, pod. Everything, everywhere, all at once from Daniels uh, and Michelle Yeoh. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that the next month. Yeah, we'll probably have a lot to say. Uh, Duel. Duel. Yeah, Karen Gillan, um, Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad. Uh-huh. I know that. Uh, directed by Riley Stearns of uh, Art of Self-Defense fame. Uh, another deadpan. Is this another deadpan comedy? One, oh my god, one hundred percent deadpan. It's great. The okay. delivery is so good. That's we, all I got to say. We skipped oh. Fantastic Beasts. Oh, oh I right. couldn't find them. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, this movie will teach me where to find them. Oh uh, yeah, Fantastic Beasts. The secret. Is that like next week? It's think today. It's out. Yeah, oh, yeah, it came out really yesterday cares. as okay. a recording. I don't think anyone's going to watch it, I'll be honest with you. There was a guy at my work today, actually, now that I think about it, who was on the phone with someone, and I assumed that they were planning to go see this movie, and he was like, yeah, we're going to see that Beasts movie, Fantastic Beasts, and someone responded, he's like, something about Dumbledore. (laughs) (laughs) And then he did say, we were going to go to the 7 o'clock, but that was sold out, and I was like, oh, "Oh, no. This is just, like, it's just shocking to me that, because, you know, J.K. Rowling is, like, not helping her case no. with her fans. Awful. <laughs> but it's also, like, even, like, if she wasn't doing that, these movies, I feel <laughs> like, are still bad. <laughs> are just, like, kind of boring. There's and, nothing going for Harry Potter. Um, no. And I've only seen the first one, but, like, it's just because, like... When Harry Potter's like, okay, it's these kids on these adventure. That's that's like fun and nostalgic, whether mm-hmm. you're a kid or an adult. But this is this is boring adults going on boring adventures. It's like, okay. It's set in the past, so you know like nothing remarkable could possibly happen. Like, what will Dumbledore's secret be? That he's gay? Yeah, I was gonna say, I think we know. <laughs> it's never said explicitly in the movies, so I don't know. I don't know. All all I know is from what you've told me about uh, the secrets of Grindelwald or his crimes. Oh, crimes of Grindelwald yeah, is awful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, They're like, he and Grindelwald were very, very close. Good Wink. friends. Wink. And it's like, that doesn't make him gay, though. Now does it? It just makes you dance around with the subject for some reason. Anyways, yeah. Great. Nobody cares. Um, <laughs> uh, we are all going to the World Fair. Yeah. Y'all are yeah. talking about this in the group chat, and I did not have time to catch up on this, but what is this? I don't know a whole lot. Oh, okay. I just know it was doing, it did well in like a festival. It was doing numbers. Doing numbers at a festival, <laughs> and it's like a, a horror, psychological horror kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that has to do with a virtual reality video yeah. game. Um, and I'm like, cool yeah i just really like the poster and i like heard the good things yeah, and good i'm poster. a dumbass so i'm like okay. good poster is good movie no now that <laughs> no as i also heard like good things and like i like the poster and i love a good spooky movie so it's like yeah why not let's do it I you said this was playing play. somewhere or? it's playing at the alamo for one day next yeah, tuesday one the day. 19th yeah okay me and ryan have tickets if you want to join okay us. now that you've mentioned it i may look into that okay yeah, yeah, great yeah. but i did read because after you bought the tickets uh hbo max did buy the rights oh yeah that's right i remember seeing that because i kept yeah. checking streaming because i remember <laughs> seeing that it was going to be on streaming and i assumed it wouldn't be playing in theaters every, anywhere yeah. so but this is like an advanced screen max. at our yeah. local album but it will be on hbo max eventually <clears throat> that's right. maximum time baby the bad guys the bad guys i'm the bad guys 
<laughs> when was the last time DreamWorks made like a movie? Oh, this movie! <laughs> this looks dumb. What is interesting about this movie, though, as you, your point, Ryan, that when's the last time DreamWorks made a big thing? Yeah. Is that uh, you can definitely, across the animation movie business, you can definitely feel the effects of Into the Spider Verse and everything. Yeah. And this feels like that, only that, like, oh, it looks different. Yeah, it looks it, different. Yeah, and like I noticed that because like I saw the trailer, I was like, huh, that that does not seem like DreamWorks style. And then I saw that Puss in Boots trailer. Yeah, and that visual is like very different from the Shrek yeah. movies and the old Puss in Boots. So it's like, okay, this must be their new like in-house style or whatever. And like it looks it's better. It's interesting. It looks better. Like it looks more like it pops out more than the kind of more realistic approach that they did. Um, which, the bulgy 3D looking bulgy 3D but you know I don't that's know that's my takeaway is that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse uh, did change things I feel oh thank god <laughs> um, I'm excited that we get a new one of those this it, year uh, it is crazy to me though still that you know Sony made that and yet is it this year or did it get delayed to next year Spider no it's Spider-Verse Part 1 is uh, is October still great but it's just crazy that they made Spider the first Spider-Verse and then they still like pump out a Morbius so it's like they learn a lesson and then they're like, no, 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 back, back to the old grind. I don't know what they're playing because next is a uh, fucking Craven. Craven the Hunter, baby. Yeah. We love Craven. That's supposed to be January of next we year. We love making Aaron Taylor Johnson put on a dumb accent, uh, is what we love in our movie. love that. It's good to be, my name's Craven the Hunter. Oh. I, 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 I'm not the biggest fan of Craven, but I don't understand how you can make a Craven the Hunter movie without a Spider Man. Yeah, I don't either. Like, it doesn't make any sense. He's just going to be hunting boar. How is that fun? He's just gonna watching be like, the big game hunter? Because, <laughs> like, food Karen, uh, <laughs> will I learn anything about this man if I watch this movie, or will so it be another the, Morbius? The, the thing about Craven the Hunter, Carrie, is he's a villain who's like a big game hunter, and he loves killing, you know, big crazy animals and he sees this spider-man he's, he's like, like you a hunter and he's like i'm gonna hunt spider-man exactly oh, so he's like he's a real he's a spider exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, that's basically it yeah and Weird. like he's entertaining enough in like cartoons and like comic books but i wouldn't i wouldn't have like he'd be fine if he was the villain of a spider-man movie but mm -hmm. like yeah. This is so weird. Like it's all it's, it's as weird too. as it's as weird as a Morbius movie. Exactly. They're like who they're like bosses get? in the way like we threw away threw in the licensed Spider Man movie video game for you to fight yeah. while before you get to the main guy. Anyways, I'm that movie's in the can, so that movie's <laughs> gonna come out regardless, but I hope we don't go I mean they're doing a Madam Web movie with Dakota Johnson. Yeah, and I was they like are. Fuck. I was trying to explain to Carrie who Madam Web was, and she was like, nope, not happening. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> to be fair, Madam Web is hard to explain. Yeah, I don't yeah. Uh, but I am uh, excited to see what Dakota to... Johnson looks like in that costume. Oh, so <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Craven the Hunter, no, the North Man. I'm so fucking sick and tired of seeing the trailers for this movie. I know I'm a hater. Listen, mm. I just really, really, really like the part where they throw the spear at him. <laughs> Catches it and throws it back. That's I could good. watch that over and That's over pretty good. <laughs> I just I just love Robert Eggers like commitment to like this is an authentic ass movie. I know. It's when, so fun. I was talking to Greg about this and I was like, when the mass reception to a movie is I'm confused, I'm like, get me in there. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see that. Because like I would <laughs> never walk into like a Viking esque kind of movie ever. But if he's in charge of it, it's like, yeah. all right, yeah, I'm gonna have fun with this, yeah, because it'll at least have enough weirdness that it's yeah. not just boring. Like we are Vikings and we are fighting, yeah, which is I fine, will kill you, but... Fielder. <laughs> I will save you, Kidman, <laughs> or whatever the other part of that is. Mother. I will mother. avenge uh, you, Father. I will save, save you, Mother. mother. I will kill you, you Mjolnir. <laughs> no. <laughs> that <laughs> Anyways, I'm so happy that movie's coming out. I'm sick and tired of looking at it. Anyway. That, that's your uh, Downton Abbey. <laughs> I guess. Downton Jeez. Abbey is May. Oh. So it's coming up. Like, you gotta go back to it. Anyways. I have to go back. <laughs> I have to go to my beach house or whatever this one's about. 
Hey, uh, <laughs> the unbearable weight of massive talent. Whoa. Is this movie okay? Is there any reviews or impressions on this movie? Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, reviews know. drop for some things, and it's been uh, pretty positive. Okay, oh, good. Cool. Yeah, good. because it could either land into like, okay, you guys went a little bit too into the bit, a little too much. Right. You gotta. Uh, I remember reading that it had a 100% Rotten Tomatoes at one point, but early on that doesn't really yeah. mean. Yeah, that doesn't a whole mean yeah. But yeah. when initial stuff is like pretty positive, it's like, all right. I'm it, excited. It I, seemed, mm-hmm. Nick Cage is very excited. Yeah. For Based on concept, I was like, that sounds fantastic. And then when the first trailer came out, I was a little worried because yes. I was like, this seems like just studio comedy e mm-hmm. and like people, it would just be like. I don't know, inauthentic yeah, yeah, in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, like too meta, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't know, but I don't know. I'm willing to have a good time. It's I like people it's who only hear about how crazy Nick Cage's films are yeah. making a film about him without really understanding. <laughs> yeah, they just have a folder of the memes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, people really like this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah I'm excited. I mean, I'm going to watch it. I'm yeah, going to watch it. Obviously. I just hope it's great. I hope it's good. Yeah, I hope it's perfect. <laughs> Anyways, that's April, and Ooh. we're halfway through April, and uh, I don't know. Cinema. Yeah. Cinema. I think it's back, baby. I don't know. Okay, well. <laughs> I was uh, thinking about this because I, I was seeing like the trailers for like uh, Marcel the Shell and like, some other stuff, so and it's like, I think this might be a very good year. Whenever you say so, I'm Marcel I'm the Shell's not doing anything for me. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm a hater. I showed I showed that trailer to Greg, and he was like, is this like a thing? And I was like, you don't know about Marcel the Shell with shoes on? And he was like, what? <laughs> What's your problem? Get out of here! Uh, anyways, uh, I've been reading a lot, a lot about you, Doc. I think some, uh, a group of guys like you and me can make a difference. Uh... I just I am obsessed. Some, with, bad I am just obsessed with the end credits for Morbius here's, as I read it. Sorry, I don't want to talk about Morbius. Man. What blows my go. what blows my mind about that is like if you think about Michael Caine's character. Yeah, I know, I know. It, it makes no sense. It, it makes no sense because he has lived through like aliens attacking Earth multiple times, robots attacking the Earth multiple times, everyone vanished off the face of the planet for five years, and yet when he is somehow trans into another dimension he's like i think that spider guy might be behind this it's like why him there are aliens and like ghosts and like vampires why do you think it's the spider in guy in retrospect you should have probably forgotten about spider-man by now yeah i would <laughs> i'm excited for the if somebody should do the documentary or research or tell all of the marketing Lead oh, up to more. There is one thing that I want to bring up to you guys. Um, do you remember the uh, cop, uh, Tyrese? Um, oh yeah, from from uh, Fast Furious. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. His character was supposed to have a robot arm. He because talked, he does in the in the comic books. In the right. comic books, he has one. And in early stuff, they film with like something on him as if he was going to have a robot arm. And in early stuff, he talked about how he was going to have a robot arm, oh. but they cut it out. Oh no. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. That's, that's what I'm saying. Because, that blew my mind. Because there's so much in the trailer from right here that's just not in the movie. Yeah. Like, there's just Michael <laughs> Keaton scenes not in the like, movie. Like, like, Disney did that fucking documentary about the making of Frozen 2. I want to see one of those for <laughs> Morbius. Because I didn't watch that documentary, but I have a friend who did. And from, from him, I gleaned that that documentary was just them being like, I don't know what the fuck we're doing. <laughs> I don't know what the story is. Ask me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like the Morbius documentary would be a very similar vibe. Let's I mean, start 100%. Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you so well, much. We know we're starting a Discord, but we haven't even filmed the movie yet. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> uh, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Movies That Are Real. Um, I'm George Cruz. I've been your host. You can find me at jcruzalvarez26. Carrie, where can people find you and your review oh. of Morbius? Oh, you can find my review of Morbius on Letterboxd just by searching my first name, Carrie. If other Carries pop up, I'm the one with the witch fingers in my photo. Nice. <laughs> now, Ryan Lance. Anyways, I'm Ryan. Uh, film piece on Letterboxd is where you could find me and read about how I thought about Morbius. I still can't get over it. Um, Morbius. <laughs> But yeah, we'll be talking about Morbius for years oh to come. God. He's just a fine character. He's fine in the comic book. He's a cool guy. Yeah, he's fine because he works fine as like a it's silly villain for a Spider-Man to fight, not as like 
the next Marvel legend arrives. <laughs> Not as the fucking that Morbius. that tagline has big. Be prepared for the beginning of a dark universe energy. Oh, oh, oh my, my god. god. <laughs> oh my god, can you imagine if like they did that shit with like Michael Keaton oh, and dude. fucking Jared Leto <laughs> and Taron Taylor Johnson, like the Sinister Sticks burr, 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 or something. I cannot believe Bitter Sinister Six so far is Venom, Michael Keaton, uh, Jared Leto, <laughs> Dakota Johnson. <laughs> but Dakota Johnson's not necessarily a bad guy. I mean, Madam Webb is not a bad guy. Yeah, but she's it's, a bad girl. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But apparently, neither is Venom, or I guess it's Morbius. That, I, dude, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> He's I'm a huge fan of the movie, so why would he want to join Michael Keaton's brought up in the Dark Universe, and I'm sad again. <laughs> Me too. What could have been? Anyways, that's a podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we will talk about the movies of April next time. Bye bye. <laughs>